And Sidney Crosby gets his 1,000th career point with that assist in overtime, which also pushes him into the top 10 all-time in points. Listen, to sit here and say this has cemented Sidney Crosby as a Mount Rushmore kind of player, he cemented himself a long time ago, but it's a big accomplishment nonetheless. Yeah, 1,000 career assists is certainly really impressive. Uh, more than that, takes tenth possession of 10th place all-time in scoring, as you see here. And it's really more the circumstances that make it impressive. It's not just him carrying this team on his back as he's done all season. It's doing it on a night in which, I mean, for the most part, you're looking at, you know, speaking of choke, like the, the Penguins were up 5-3, then tied, and they're all over the place. And it's Crosby who, in no su surprise to no one, is, you know, the clutch guy in clutch moments. So, it's all those things wrapped into one. And look, I know statistically the math would say that the Penguins are slightly better than a 50-50 shot to get in. They're the team I'd be betting on in that Eastern Conference wildcard race. The Islanders, you know, they haven't locked down their position either, but feels like right at this exact moment in time, the Islanders and the Penguins are the two teams that should make it in based on the way that they've played of late. Yeah, you sort of do the math problem side of things and keep in mind that Pittsburgh does have the tiebreaker over both Washington and Detroit at this moment. They're two regulation wins ahead of the Capitals, four ahead of the Red Wings. So the most in terms of total points that Washington and Detroit can get to is 91. Pittsburgh, if they just go, well, 2-0-1, they're going to get to 91 as well. So that's kind of the magic number-esque record that the Penguins will need here down the stretch. But they pick up a massive two points uh, last night in Detroit, dropping a massive two points. Oh, go ahead, Frank. I was just going to say, you got to read the story today from Paul Paduti on dailyfaceoff.com. At Adjusted Hockey, I tweeted the link to it. If you're looking for additional perspective on Crosby, we always have this date, this debate. Who's you know on the NHL's Mount Rushmore? He sizes everyone up, and it's just so perfectly timed given the conversation that we're having. The graphics are unbelievable. The writing is excellent. Like This is next-level stuff from Paul that I think will answer or solve a lot of uh, debates that are happening in living rooms and tap rooms around the continent. Yeah, I'll give all the hockey fans listening a piece of advice. If you see a story written by Paul Baduti, just click it because you'll learn a handful of things in that story. Just quickly before we move off the Penguins, actually, I mentioned needing that 2-0-1 record. That's their control their own fate number. This is their remaining schedule here as they head down the stretch. They're at home tomorrow to the Boston Bruins. Monday, they'll host the Nashville Predators, and then they will wrap up their season next Wednesday with a game against the Red Hot New York Islanders, who we'll touch on in a second as well. Second one I got for you, I want to circle back to the Sidney Crosby discussion. And Pat, if you can maybe flash up the top 10 points all-time list that we, uh, that we had made there. I'm going to say Sidney Crosby eventually works himself into the top three and gets past Mark Messier, he would need 296 more points in his career. Fair or foul? Um, so you're basically looking at four more full seasons from Crosby? Yeah, four more full seasons at 90 points a season. Or I don't season. know. I don't. I mean, look, his love of the game is unquestioned. I, I don't know that I'd bet against it, but I would say that feels at least a little bit like a reach. Like at some point, you know, even Joe Sackick and and these guys, Steve Eiserman, the production declines, and it's not ninety points a year. Could he get there? I think it would probably take him closer to five, at at some rate. And and what we're talking about right now is. Crosby's having one of the best 36 year old seasons we've ever seen in league history to continue to do that four years from now at 40. I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, not sold. It, it, it is a tough one. I think the top five is very doable. When you look at the fact he needs 207 to get past Ron Francis, but anyhow, than that might be a stretch. What's up hockey fans. If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider Frank Zaravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.